Greetings and welcome to Module 4 of the Geneva Foundation for Medical Education and Research eCourse on Adolescent Sexual and Reproductive Health. Um, it's a pleasure to congratulate you on reaching the halfway point of this e-course, and I really look forward to taking you through this next module on safe abortion care. Again, my name is Marina Plessens. I work with the World Health Organization's Department of Sexual and Reproductive Health and Research in Geneva, Switzerland. Let's get started. So the first slide, as we've shown in all of the modules, discusses definitions related to safe abortion care. First is induced abortion. Induced abortion is the intentional loss of an intrauterine pregnancy due to medical or surgical means. Then the next three definitions relate to different um, categories or classifications of abortion. Safe abortion, less safe abortion, and least safe abortion. The safe abortion definition is the abortion that meets all three of the following criteria. First, it's done with a method recommended by WHO. That is medical abortion, vacuum aspiration, dilation, and evacuation. The second is that it is appropriate to the pregnancy duration. And the third is that it is provided by, supported by a trained healthcare provider. Less safe abortion, on the other hand, is abortion that one is done by a trained healthcare provider, but with an outdated method, for example, a sharp cutterage or it is done using a WHO recommended method, but without information and support from a trained individual. Finally, at least safe abortion is abortion that's provided by an untrained individuals using dangerous methods, for example, ingestion of caustic substances. So what is the rationale for providing safe abortion care to adolescents? The first point is that unsafe abortion is an important problem. The Guttmacher Institute in 2019 estimated that 5.7 million girls aged 15 to 19 years undergo abortions every year in low and middle income countries, the majority of which are unsafe. Second point is that unsafe abortions in adolescents have major health consequences. Compared to older women, adolescents are more likely to seek abortions from untrained providers. They're more likely to have an self-induced abortion to terminate pregnancies after the first trimester, to delay seeking medical care for complications following unsafe abortions. They are also less likely to know about their rights concerning abortion and post-abortion care and to report having had an abortion. The third rationale for providing safe abortion care to adolescents is that safe abortion carries very low health risks. While the risks differ depending on the duration of the pregnancy and the method used, and the people carrying out the method, safe abortion can have a lower risk than an injection of penicillin or even carrying a pregnancy to term. The fourth and final point of rationale is that abortion related laws and policies and the provision of good quality services still need our attention. Access to safe abortion services is still highly restricted in many countries, despite the evidence that restrictive abortion laws are associated with higher levels of maternal mortality. When safe abortion is legally allowed for adolescents, it still often is not adolescent friendly. This slide presents the human rights obligations of member states or countries related to safe abortion care. The first is that states are obliged under human rights law to provide safe abortion care. Implementation of measures to prevent unsafe abortion and to provide post-abortion care are part of the core obligation of states to uphold the right to sexual and reproductive health. States are obliged to ensure universal access to a comprehensive package of sexual and reproductive health interventions, which includes safe abortion care and post-abortion care, the latter whether or not abortion is legal. Additionally, human rights mechanisms have called for the de decriminalization of abortion and the removal of barriers such as third party consent requirements. Finally, denial of abortion and forced continuation of pregnancy have been identified as a form of gender based violence. So what are some key concepts to consider in the provision of safe abortion care for adolescents? The first is that restrictive laws and policies often force adolescents to seek illegal and unsafe abortions. Laws and policies instead should promote the respect and protection of women and girls. 
This includes ensuring timely access to safe abortion and to addressing stigma and discrimination against those who seek abortion services or post-abortion care. The second concept to consider is that adolescents are less likely than adult women to obtain safe abortion services. As we heard this before in the slideshow, adolescents and other stakeholders should be informed about the dangers of unsafe abortions, the safe abortion services available in their context, and the circumstances in which they can be legally obtained. Finally, abortion services and healthcare providers are often not adolescent friendly, and this is becoming a theme, I hope, in this e-course. Instead, healthcare providers must be trained and supported to inform, counsel, and provide services to adolescents according to their evolving capacities and in a way that is responsive to the needs of different groups of adolescents with particular needs and circumstances. This slide presents all of the current WHO guidelines that have recommendations related to safe abortion care. You can see that the most recent one is one on medical management of abortion that was published in 2018. There's a guidance on safe abortion technical and policy guidance for health systems. There's the same guidance that we saw in some of the previous modules titled WHO guidelines on preventing early pregnancy and poor reproductive outcomes among adolescents in developing countries. And this document issues some very specific recommendations for adolescents at the policy, community, health facility, and individual level. At the policy level, it uh, recommends to ensure that laws and policies enable adolescents to obtain safe abortion services. At the community level, it recommends to identify and overcome barriers for the provision of safe abortion services. At the health facility level, it recommends to ensure that adolescents have access to post-abortion care, regardless of whether the abortion or attempted abortion was legal. And finally, at the individual level, it recommends to inform adolescents and other stakeholders about the dangers of unsafe methods of interrupting a pregnancy, safe, the safe abortion services that are legally available, and under what circumstances they can be obtained. Some other guidance that are relevant to this area include health worker roles in providing safe abortion care and post-abortion contraception, and then two additional documents, ensuring human rights in the provision of contraceptive information and services, guidance and recommendations, which deals primarily with contraception, but also includes a few recommendations relevant to abortion, and then the consolidated guideline on sexual and reproductive health and rights for women living with HIV. As with all of the other modules, all of these documents are available in the public arena on WHO's webpage, and most, if not all of them, are also available in multiple languages uh, to promote accessibility of their recommendations. This slide presents a few complementary documents to WHO's guidelines, some that are still WHO documents, but are other types of resource materials, and some that have been produced by other organizations. The first is the Clinical Practice Handbook for Safe Abortion, uh, published by WHO in 2014. The second is an interagency statement to which WHO contributed on preventing gender bias sex selection. The third and the fourth are related to sexual health, the first one on sexual health, human rights, and the law, and the fourth one on sexual health and its linkages to reproductive health, an operational approach. Both of these are also WHO documents. The next document is not a WHO doc document, but it's a journal article titled Abortion Care for Adolescents and Young Women, um, published in the International Journal of Gynecology and Obstetrics. The second to last document is a, a document titled Adolescents Need for and Use of Gov Abortion Services in Developing Countries, published by Guttmacher Institute. And the final one is a provision of abortion care for adolescents and young women, a systematic review published by IPASS, uh, an organization as well. Again, all of these materials are available in the public arena, and at least the WHO ones, many of uh, these should be available in multiple languages. The next two slides provide some of the recommendations related to safe abortion care that are included in the Not on Pause technical brief on responding to the sexual and reproductive health needs of adolescents in the context of the COVID-19 crisis. So what are some specific measures for delivering um, safe abortion care services in the context of COVID-19? 
The first is that um, programs should inform adolescents where and how to access comprehensive abortion care, including safe abortion, to the full extent of the law and post-abortion care through appropriate channels. The second is that in health facilities, ensure that comprehensive abortion care remains available for adolescents, that it is safe, and that it is provided respectfully and confidentially. The third is that uh, to consider relaxing policies to enable the use of telemedicine for the provision of medical abortion to adolescents to avoid unnecessary clinical visits. And the final recommendation on this page is to consider reducing barriers that delay access to care and therefore increase risks of adolescents reverting to unsafe abortion practices. In particular, consider waiving restrictions if these exist, such as on age, parental spousal consent, or marital status, and providing services subsidized or free of charge within the relevant legal framework and in line with international guidelines. Continuing from the previous slide, the technical brief also includes three additional recommendations to ensure that gender-based violence prevention and treatment services are available to the adolescent during the care encounter, or that the adolescent is referred based on their individual situation, to ensure that sexually transmitted infection services are available to the adolescent during the care encounter, or that the adolescent is referred based on their individual situation, just as above. And finally, to counsel adolescents on and provide post-abortion contraception where desired, in order to avoid rapid repeat pregnancy. The technical brief also mentions one consideration for resumption of normal services in the context of COVID-19, and that is that where possible, consider ways to promote the institutionalization of good practices in improving accessibility and quality that were put in place during the period of closures and disruption. This final slide presents a cartoon with three girls sitting on the steps of a building. The first in the middle says, I'm pregnant, but I'm not yet ready to have a baby. What choices do I have? Her friend says, I'm not sure. My friend went to someone for help, but he wasn't a healthcare provider and he made her very sick. Finally, the other friend says, but things have changed. Healthcare providers can help you, give you supportive information and help you with whatever choice you make. Thank you so much for listening to this module. And from here, I'll hand over to my colleagues from the Eastern Mediterranean Regional Office. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chandra. I'm Dr. Nirmini Hemachandra, a medical officer working in the Reproductive and Maternal Health Unit at the WHO Regional Office for Eastern Mediterranean. Now, we will discuss the regional perspective of self-abortion care in the region access to legal, safe, and comprehensive abortion care, including post-abortion care, is essential for the attainment of the highest possible level of sexual and reproductive health. First, we will see the inclusion of abortion care in related policies in the Eastern Mediterranean region. In 2019, WHO conduct a global survey on reproductive, maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health policies in member states. From the Eastern Mediterranean region, 16 member states participate for this survey. Though the majority of the Eastern Mediterranean countries has restrictive abortion laws, among 16 countries who participate for the RMNCH policy survey, 11 included abortion care as a component of national reproductive health policy. 15 countries included vacuum aspirators in their national commodity list. Afghanistan, Bahrain, Egypt, Oman, Morocco and Pakistan have included contraception in post-abortion care guidelines. Now, we will see the abortion laws in the region. This is the global abortion law map which record the legal status of abortion in countries across the globe. So this map use a color scale from dark red to blue. The dark red indicate the countries which prohibited the abortion altogether. The red means that those countries permit abortion to save the woman's life. 
yellow regions permits abortion to preserve health of the woman light blue they permit the abortion under broad social and economic grounds the dark blue areas that women can obtain abortion on request if you see that the eastern mediterranean region it shows a kind of very restrictive abortion laws it ranges from not permitted to to preserve health of the woman at the same time there are some other reasons that some countries permit abortion uh, in the cases of rape incest fetal impairments that they can uh, obtain abortions under the law of that country but certain countries there are further restriction they need spousal authorization or parental authorization to obtain the abortion reach places many challenges regarding abortion and abortion care lack of data regarding the incidence prevalence or availability of abortion care services is a main challenge in the region then access to services due to many reasons the lack of information on safe abortion care services lack of infrastructure the cost for the service the fear of confidentiality breach and the socio cultural factors has impact on the access to safe abortion services restrictive laws on abortion make women to seek unsafe abortion at the same time that the stigma associated with word abortion has prevent women from seeking care as well as health workers from providing health care services there is a misconception that improve access to safe abortion services increases abortion rate but the countries like tunisia where there are so much liberal abortion laws have shown that improving abortion care services does not increase abortion rates lack of political commitment to support safe abortion care services is a major challenge in the region politicians refrain from engaging in efforts to expand and modernize the provision of abortion care due to cultural and religious reasons choice and competency of service provider is another challenge service providers are not skilled enough to address the needs of adolescents seeking for abortion care and at the same time adolescents are prefer to obtain services from the female health care workers the political conflicts in various countries make adolescents more vulnerable to unplanned pregnancies leading to increased needs for abortion where most of the countries it is unavailable or so restrictive now we will see the regional opportunities to improve abortion care services in the region who guidance on self care can be a shift towards combating stigma and privacy challenges by removing the need for healthcare providers as middle persons at the same time with the covid-19 pandemic the digital technologies uh, used in uh, medical care has improved therefore there is a high possibility of providing some uh, services related to safe abortion care through these digital technologies now i will tell you two success stories on safe abortion care in the region one from afghanistan other one from pakistan in pak afghanistan 
a low NGO called Mari Stops carried out a project on family planning and post-abortion care with the slogan of by 2030, no abortion will be unsafe and every individual who wants access to contraception will have it. Their mission was safe abortion, save lives. So they provide services where and when women need them without discrimination and they remove unnecessary stigma and policy and legal challenges where possible. Make sure girls and women know their legal rights and entitlement and that they make the care is affordable and provide real choice in method provided. So they use the integrated approach to provide availability, accessibility, quality and acceptability of sexual and reproductive health information and services for vulnerable and marginalized women, girls, men and boys in six provinces in Afghanistan. They also launch a campaign called Smash Abortion Stigma. They operated through 36 centers with provide comprehensive range of services. 40 Mari Stops ladies and 10 mobile outreach streams provided these services. By the end of 2019, they were able to avert 156,000 unsafe abortion and 286,000 unintended pregnancies. The next success story comes from Pakistan. IPAS, an NGO, addressed the public health crisis of unsafe abortion in Pakistan, leading government directly address maternal deaths through a series of steps at the national and provincial level, which improved key aspect of the abortion care services. They carried out this project from 2012 to 20. 80. They used several strategies to achieve their results. They launched a successful advocacy campaign where the key provincial stakeholders discuss the impact of unsafe abortion on women and girls and identify a common solutions for mitigating this impact primarily by advocating for the use of latest WHO endorsed uterine evacuation technologies. They established Punjab Reproductive Health Technology Assessment Committee, which was able to include misoprostol and the manual vacuum aspiration in the essential package of health services and essential list as the reproductive health technology of choice for providing safe uterine evacuation and post-abortion care. The project used task shifting as one of their strategies. They trained mid-level providers in uterine evacuation and post-abortion care technologies. They advocate and included medical abortion use misoprostol in midwifery curriculum. The initiative started several activities to improve the safe abortion care services in the in their project area they conducted global values clarification and attitude transformation training for healthcare workers this training helped healthcare workers to realize that no matter what their beliefs are about abortion no woman should suffer the loss of life because of lack of access the project supported to develop service delivery guidelines of high quality safe future and evacuation and post abortion care. Later, they were able to scale up this project to Sindh province. They highlight the challenges faced by the Pakistani women in accessing safe abortion care in UN Human Rights Committee. The standards and guidelines on safe abortion care was endorsed by the Ministry of Health in March 2018.
and the minister of health issued a statement specially mentioning the adolescents and disadvantaged women and girls in rural areas highlighting the needs of these marginalized populations now we will see how to make safe abortion care services available and accessible and safe for all women where it is allowed first we need to ensure data availability which facilitate the evidence based decision making to improve abortion care services we need to improve the availability of data through including abortion data in countries dhs and other population based surveys health information management systems and special studies secondly we need to improve the access to the services through improve the quality of srh services improving professional skills including counseling reduce barriers to access to quality services and information improve awareness regarding legal status of abortion in the country and the safe abortion care service availability the next step is we need to prevent abortions to prevent abortions we need to prevent unwanted and unplanned pregnancies for that we need to improve our focus and strategies on preventing early marriages and we need to improve the comprehensive sexual education at schools to empower adolescents young people regarding how to prevent unwanted and unplanned pregnancies then the family planning services and supplies needs to be available for all girls boys women and men the post abortion care services needs to be available for all the next strategy to improve the safe abortion care services in a country is creating enabling environments at the policy level the policy makers needs to collaborate with community groups religious leaders clinical professionals and look beyond the pregnancy termination or abortion and its legal ground they need to focus more on maternal death and negative health impacts associated with unsafe abortion and its burden on health system and enhance the availability of the family planning services for all vulnerable population and safe abortion care services for who needs the next strategy is the pragmatic and health oriented approach under this they need to make post abortion family planning services as a part of comprehensive reproductive health services to minimize the risk of future unplanned and unwanted pregnancies again they need to prevent and manage the complication of abortion in a more operational context of health rights to improve the status of women and youth though the abortion is illegal in the country once it happen that health of the woman is needs to be saved in humanitarian settings we need to ensure the contraception safe abortion and post abortion care including these in essential health service packages for these humanitarian populations this is the end of 
the regional perspectives of safe abortion care. Thank you very much.